Darren, thanks so much for joining me. It's super great to have you. You know, we've been friends since 2004, man. So we go way back. Um, welcome to the Call Shaper Consult. Great to be here, Alec, and uh, great to great to be speaking with you today. Yeah, man, it's always good to see you and chat a little bit about what you guys do at Cloud Tech Gurus. It's it's such a unique business model, one, but what it does to help clients is so spectacular. And kind of out of the realm, most people don't know that there are you know, services like what the gurus do out there. So, you know, before we get into any, you know, real deep questions and talk about efficiencies you help with, tell everybody what is Cloud Tech Gurus and what do you all do? So we're a couple things to uh, our brand clients. We are a smarter way to source contact center solutions. And really in building the business, we wanted to create the, the ultimate, we wanted to revolutionize how companies source contact center solutions. We wanted to create a business that would be a big win for our, our clients and everyone involved. And so, you know, essentially what I like to ask folks, and this is one of the best ways to understand what we do, when I meet with a contact center director or VP, um, I'll tell them, imagine the next time you're assigned a project to source some technology or another. Imagine if you could clone yourself and get your clone to do 70% or more of that sourcing work for you. Wouldn't that be great? To which they say, yeah, that would be great. And I tell them that's our business model, except instead of your clone, we assign you a professional contact center consultant at no cost, who's going to do all the research, do all the documentation around requirements, build an RFP if that's necessary, and then manage the RFP responses host all the meetings or help us uh, screen all the vendors, host all the meetings and more. Ultimately in our model, we're getting rid of all the repetitive discovery meetings mm -hmm. and uh, salespeople uh, aren't allowed to reach out to our clients directly. Everybody has to work through our guru. That's what we call our consultant sub agents. And, uh, and ultimately it's great because, you know, to really screen that, well, it, it, there's two problems with how companies source now. One is that you assign somebody uh, whoever, the director, the business analyst, uh, with the task of being the, the lead on sourcing a solution. Well, they already had a full-time job that was keeping them very busy. They're probably working more than 40 hours a week on that job. How are they going to find the time to really research and find the best possible vendors in the market? Mm -hmm. They're not. They have to try to do the research as quickly as they can. So who do they stumble on? It's the same ones if you Googled, you know, CCAS or dialer, or workforce management. It's those vendors. That's who they find. That's it. Um, and most of them have been around for 20 years, some 30 years. And you got to wonder if technology has been evolving like that. Um, well, there's got to be something better than a 20-year-old tech stack, right? Uh, we think so. And that was kind of in the beginning of our business. Uh, for the first several years, we spent, I don't know, 3,000 hours or more evaluating vendors, looking for ones that were ultra modern, not 20 year old tech stacks, but mm -hmm. you know, preferably well under 10. Um, who was super, who could be super impactful for our clients? Who could provide the best value? Great pricing, but an overall value with the solution they provided. And those are the ones we've, we've chosen to partner with. Now we have access to pretty much every vendor in the space, but uh, the ones that we've signed direct agreements with as a partner are the ones that we're most excited about. Ultimately, with any given client, uh, whoever they go with, we're we're fine as long as it's the best one for their use case and success criteria and everything else. But you know, it works out really great because you can't really. So the research part, we've already done the research. We're we're all, we're still spending twenty hours a month watching demos and evaluating vendors. So we're in the, we're more in the know on the unique vendors, not just the magic quadrant vendors and can help uh, align the client with vendors that are better, uh, better fit for their, for their overall value, for the use case and everything else. So we're past the, uh, the research part. We've done it. Clients don't have to. Now, when it comes to screening, you can only screen vendors as well as your requirements documentation allows mm -hmm. you to. So you yeah. need really, really great documentation or an RFP, a BRD or RFP. And because you need to be able to bring that detail to each of the prospective vendors for an opportunity and see, are you a fit? Do you match? No. You know, a lot of times our gurus even create like a whole questionnaire or RFI 
around everything that was important. But they have these amazing documents they create for us. Uh, I mean, multiple pages. These our gurus are, all have their own consulting practices. If one of their clients came to them and said, "Can I get a discovery and have you document my requirements?" That'd be ten grand or more. But our clients don't pay that. Uh, when there are clients, it's all included at no cost. But they're gonna they're gonna do an amazing job documenting the requirements, which allows us to do an amazing job with vendor screening and only bring back to them the ones that are the best fit, the best match. Then their guru is going to run through that with them, decide who they want to uh, meet with or get an RP from or so on. It manages the whole process, eventually facilitating all the meetings. And again, keeping the salespeople at bay so our clients don't have five vendors trying to close them every week. At right. some point. So, yeah. uh, you know, we want to create a, a big win mostly for the clients. It's kind of our view that if we could take great care of our clients and provide them a valuable service, They'll want to do business with us again and again, and, and that's what we're seeing. I, our average client ends up on three to five sourcing projects with us because each one works out so well for them. So wow. anyway, I, I probably said too much, but you know, we wanted to create something revolutionary. I think we did. It, you know, what I wanted to create was a no-brainer where if somebody heard our model, they would just, yeah, why wouldn't I want to do that versus, no, I think I want to do everything myself. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, or uh, versus have you take on 70% of the workload. So anyway, that's a little bit about us. Well, that's, I mean, it's pretty cool because, you know, our whole modus operandi here at Call Shaper for 2024 is about how to help our clients create more efficiencies, right? And to me, you know, after working with you guys for a couple of years, I see what you do as kind of the peak of helping customers be efficient with their time because time is money, right? And the more time they're spending trying to hunt down a potential solution, the less money they're actually earning ultimately because they're spending their time running in circles. Like you said, you do a Google search or you go to software advice or you go to you know, Gartner or any of these and you're doing a search. Well, if you really want to put in all the time necessary, God bless you. Uh, but that should be after work time, right? And that means less time with family, less time with friends, less time to just sleep. Um, why yep. not have someone that knows what the heck they're doing do all that work for you? And oh, by the way, it's not going to cost you anything uh, except a little mm -hmm. bit of time when you do demos and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, the whole, I mean, the whole kind of a, a part of it came from when I used to sell CCAS or run sales for CCAS companies. I watched empathetically what my clients had to go through. You know, they would have a mandate. They had to look at five vendors. And I watched as they struggled to do the research and really find the best ones. It was always the same companies again and again. And I just watched what they had to go through to try to source and find a good solution. And I thought there's got to be a better way for these people to do it. Uh, and consultants, you know, that was the best I came up with. But Consultants are very expensive. Some of them bill out to uh, 2000 a day. So we want to create a better way. And I think we did it. And, and certainly we take a, taking on 70% or more of the workload. We certainly make it easier for clients to land with the best possible provider like Call Shaper, who is, yeah. uh, we're proud to have you guys as a partner. So, you know, what are some of the issues you're, you're seeing or your gurus are seeing and hearing from um, clients in regards to like compliance issues for contact centers and, and how are these create like these issues impacting the efficiencies for them? Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously, as you know, the the newest government requirements. Uh, I think when they came out, everyone was like, "Oh gosh, can I even make an outbound call anymore?" And, and you certainly can, but there's more rules and regulations around it. And uh, <clears throat> for companies that are just have landing pages to try to get leads. Um, they can't just call those leads on behalf of a com another company anymore. That's out. So that's, you know, so I guess that's impacted outbound sales centers, depending on if they were using those kinds of marketers, those marketers no longer could call on their behalf without uh, express written permission and a bunch of other things that basically are going to put some of those companies, uh, some of the lead companies out of business. But, you know, that's one. You know, the other ones that are really impactful uh, are really the regulations and what's going on in the caller ID management world. So I, I've taken, you know, caller ID, monitoring, remediation, um, managing the numbers and switching them out and for clean ones and auto automatically. 
uh, caller ID branding. I put them all under um, caller ID management, and it solves for a lot. But you know, it's a it's a no brainer because uh, everyone's paying for it right now without even benefiting from it because they're making their outbound calls. And right now, uh, what I've heard is sixty six percent of DIDs have a negative tag with either T-Mobile, AT&T, or Verizon, 66%. So when you're calling people, if there's a negative tag on AT&T and you're calling one, it's going to show up as spam, possible spam, nuisance, whatever. Um, and no one ever answers those calls, right? right. So, um, you know, using solutions that solve for that. And nowadays they're automated. And I know you guys even automate some of that uh, to make it easy for your clients. Uh -huh. But uh, and it's so valuable because you you basically have a service that's monitoring the numbers all the time. If they've got their own inventory where they can switch it out for numbers that they already know are clean with no negative labels on any cell phone provider, um, they can do the CNAM part too. And uh, and so you know at the very least it's going to show up without any negative tag on it. So you're more right. likely to to answer. And then you know you could also do branding now. So it says your company name. So, and if you're a company that person's doing business with, they're going to answer for sure. When Cox Communications calls me, I use Cox Communications. It could be important <laughs> or right. they're going to upsell me something, right? But I answer it. Um, so in the cost is such that you're actually paying more to have labor agents calling numbers where, the, uh, where, the, where they're not going to answer the phone because of negative tag. So people can get up to a 60% better answer rate by managing their caller ID with various solutions that are on the market now. And then well, I, the I, other I, part of that is also, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think that's an important part that a lot of people lose sight of for creating business efficiencies and looking at the big picture is that if you have 80 agents and 80 agents are getting a 60% of their calls aren't being answered. Mm -hmm. You're paying those 80 agents to sit there and hope and pray that somebody picks up the phone. Well, if you're getting marked as spam and you're paying an extra 2000 a month to have it remediated, like we use DNC.com um, and uh, you know contact center compliance, we're partnered exactly. with them mm -hmm. for remediation. Or you're using a platform like Outbound ANI, which we have an integration with now, to be able to kind of figure out which is the best number at which time throughout the day to be using. And you're paying a couple of thousand for that. Well, look at what your savings are. Do you really need 80 agents anymore? Now it's awful to say, yeah. but the reality is maybe you don't need 80 agents. Maybe 60 mm -hmm. is just fine. And mm -hmm. you're those 60 are or, always- Or busy. you have 80 that are actually connecting more yes. often. And they're so connecting more productivity, often. productivity, a better yeah. efficiency, yeah. Yeah, but either way, you should see greater efficiencies by using these types of technologies. And like you said, right, this is something that you guys can, you have gurus that can point people in the right direction for what are gonna be the best solution for what I do today, right? And not just fly by night, like, oh, call these guys or call these guys. No, no, no. There's gonna be a long list of questions we gotta run through because we're gonna make sure it's the right solution, not just a solution. Correct, because some we've got maybe five to 10 different suppliers that are in that caller ID management space. But sometimes the best option is to put them with the right dialer that also incorporates what they need. Because then you can make it dummy proof and just easy and they're just doing what they used to do. They're just making their, their outbound calls. Um, I would also think, you know, if I had a large company, I would probably want to use it even if I wasn't using a dialer or doing any serious outbound calls. But for any of my employees that call anyone for business or if they're calling consumers, we'd kind of want to know if on, you know, calling people on Verizon, it's going to show up as spam so we can remediate that and get that removed. Because, you know, who wants to waste any time having anyone call anyone where sure. there might be a, a, a tag on there that's going to keep them from answering. So I even think it relates to any business really that that is doing any whether through a dialer or just employees picking up the phone, I think you'd want to have that in place. But uh, you know, the other part of that though, with, with answer rates, since we're on it is, uh, is getting accurate information. So again, if I was doing a lot of outbound, I'd make sure I had a really great source for super accurate information, uh, cell phone numbers and addresses, maybe emails, whatever, but I'd want super accurate information 
So that again, what's the point in, you know, when you think of what the cost of labor, which I don't know what is it, what is it, 50, 20 bucks an hour now in what California and probably yeah. everyone else will fall. You know, so you have people you're paying that much. Now it's actually costing you more when you factor in recruiting, training, attrition, and so on. But they're they're making calls that uh that they're getting wrong numbers, disconnects. Oh, he you got the, you know, uh you're at the wrong place whatever you're, you're, you're making a lot of these calls and you want to maximize the efficiency for each employee doing outbound or that's part of outbound campaigns. So you want to make sure more often than not, they're calling someone and it's the right person on the right number and that they're going to answer. That's another right. one. And we have, a, a you actually turned me on to one a long time ago. That's a partner of ours. We've got a few more right now that are super exciting and where you have a lot of ability to, to uh, filter and suppress in finding just the right contacts for whatever your business model is. But that's another one. So that one, and then all the caller ID management, uh, that's critical, I think, for anyone doing outbound right now. Yeah, I would agree. So have you had any like interesting or pretty cool results that clients have shared with you about what happened to their, their efficiencies after working with the gurus? Is that something that you've gotten from some of your customers? Oh, yeah. Um, we have great, we really are terrible, by the way, at reaching out to clients and getting testimonials. And oh, I think we all are. Yeah, food. us too. <laughs> no, I'm the worst. If, if if I had a full-time marketing director, we're in between right now, uh, she would be scolding us. And probably the first thing she'd do would go out to all of our clients and mm -hmm. get that. But um, but we have some and they're they're fantastic because ultimately we shortened you know, everything, time is money. We're shortening that window of how long it takes them to source. So when I was selling CCAS, for example, I'd say on average, it took a CCAS client like 12 months from the time they started the, oh, do we need new CCAS to doing some research on it, to documenting all the requirements, to, you know, running through every vendor wants their own discovery mm -hmm. meeting and yada, 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 RFP if that's in there. You know, it's like 12 months, but we're doing it you know, it's rare now for us to ever have a client where it takes 12 months because we're providing them intel, research, support, a professional consultant to help map it out. In fact, you wouldn't believe how frequently our clients actually end up contracting with our gurus separate from, you know, the sourcing project. But hey, I like you. You know a lot. How about doing a gap analysis and let's see what's wrong with my people and processes. Right. Uh, so it happens quite frequently. But um but ultimately, we're shaving down time. Uh, this is what they tell us. We're shaving down time significantly. We're taking on the majority of the sourcing workload. Uh, we're helping them find vendors they never would have found without us, and that typically they end up going forward with. It's rare that one of the big name Magic Quadrant vendors uh, wins over, and we'll bring them all to the table. Anything the client wants, we want to make sure they source the best possible vendor, but uh, they typically don't win. It's companies that you know, people might not be as familiar with. Um, yeah. There might be a lot of companies that aren't super familiar with, with call shaper. I know yeah. you guys really love it. There's probably a few out there. And when we're talking with a client that's looking for the best possible dialer for the business, we're going to bring it to the table, whereas they might have not found you on their own. So uh, we're bringing in the best possible providers for saving time, saving money. And then the proof is in the pudding because almost every time we have a project with a client. We almost immediately get a second client. They say, hey, that was a better way to source. How about helping us with a CRM? How about with at-home agent uh, network monitoring? How about, and we just move on from project to project. We have several clients where we've done five or six sourcing projects for, for them. So, uh, you know, that's kind of how we gauge how well we're doing. If people liked our, our model enough that they want to keep coming back, we're doing something right. Right on. Well, so you said it best, right? The proof is in the pudding. And when you've got clients coming back to the well over and over and over again, you know, they, they saw the benefit and the efficiencies that were created from working with cloud tech gurus. So tell us, like, how, what are the best way to get in touch with you? Is it going to your website? What's the best way for people that are looking to, like, find the most efficient way to source new technology with the gurus? How do they get in touch with you? What do they do? Well, uh, I'll give you three ways. One is cloud, uh, www.cloudtechgurus.com. 
Uh, the other is info at cloudtechgurus.com. Uh, and then our phone number, if anyone wants to call, uh, they can call me direct at 602-975-4321. And that's right talk on. or text on that number. But any one of those uh, will we'll uh, we'll help get them the information they need and we can have a discussion and, um, and we're here to help. Uh, a lot of times the things we help with aren't things that uh, there's any compensation for. You know, we're here to also help people learn and understand. We, we're in meetings all the time where people want to better understand the difference between RPA and, you know, AI automation. And, you know, is there a, is there a solution that solves for this? Mm-hmm. And that's, uh, and I love when people do that because whether they end up working with us or not, hey, I've got this problem. Is there something that can do this? And I might not even know, but I go back to my team and I'm able to come back to uh, the person I'm okay. speaking with. Yes, in fact, we have two or three, uh, two or three partners that provide just that. But yes, they do this, and here's the outcomes they solve for. So uh, you know, a lot of times it's advice, it's education, it's learning about technologies. It's uh, they can reach out to us to learn about vendors in the market. Um, so we're here to be a resource, and for those where it makes sense, we're we're here to help them source the best possible provider for their business and customer outcomes. That's awesome. So. You know, we're going to post, put all this stuff, um, all the contact information here at the end of the video. But um, I did want to make sure that people had a chance to hear that, too, because it is easy to get in touch with you guys. And then it's pretty fast to be, you know, partnered with a guru and go through the initial stages of the process. And, you know, the efficiencies mm-hmm. you help these companies create and build for themselves means that you're helping them to learn how to be more efficient and then make more money. Right. And. We're, we're not in business, in, you know, for our, you know, our health. We're in business to make money. So it's a kind Absolutely. of an important thing to uh, to help people make more money. And I always mm-hmm. like to say, right, if, if Call Shaper is not the right solution for someone, that's okay. Let me point them in the direction where it will be the right solution. And, you know, I've, I've mm-hmm. referred some people over to Cloud Tech Gurus before where we weren't a good fit for what they really wanted. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. What's more important is, helping the customer find what's best for them and their business model. And everybody's different, right? So there's a platform for everybody. So listen, Darren. Yeah. You're right on there. You know, that's that's how I did it when I was in sales. Uh, I had times where I'd, I'd have a client ready to sign an agreement. I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to, I can't let you do it. I'm not convinced that we're the right yeah. fit for you. And uh, I never want to go to a trade show and have to uh, like avoid you. I want to be able to see everybody I know and get a hug and greet each other warmly. And unless I'm sure that that's going to be the outcome, I don't, I don't want you to become a client. So, and you're one of the special few that follows that philosophy too, but ultimately it helps to build that reputation where people are going to keep coming back to you and wanting to do business. You know, final note, you talk about, you know, saving people money, but efficiency. A lot of times we're working with a client and as we work with them, we find there's all these different ways where efficiency can be created and where their total cost of ownership for their contact center can be reduced. And right now, you know, you watch on the news every day, there's more layoffs and this, that, you know, it's a, who knows what's going to happen this year economically. So I think it is important for companies to look for ways where they can reduce their call center TCO. And as we work with clients, we're able to see where they can use AI, RPA and other solutions to improve that efficiency, you know, bringing in call shaper, uh, you know, for for a company looking for the best dialer for their business use case and outcome, you know, that is a way to improve efficiency, save the money, but also automation and AI. And there's so many other things that we're able to bring up that they wouldn't typically know about um, and be familiar with. And when they're able to learn, there's a lot of solutions out there that you're paying for it now without getting all the benefits. Right. And there's a bunch. So we want to educate them on these things and, and help them lower their TCO. Right on. Well, Darren, thanks so much for joining us for the Call Shaper Consult and uh, look forward to, to hearing some more great wins here in the near future.